Hi, here I'll be going through with you the blood circulation through the heart and how it is brought in and away to the heart through the various arteries and veins. So first off, I'll be drawing for you an illustration. This is not the actual illustration of the heart, however I found it useful when I was studying and I thought that I might share it with you guys first and it might help you in your understanding when we get to the actual shape and dimension of the heart. Let's begin. Since our drawing is laterally inverted to the heart within the body, the actual left appears on the right of our drawing and the actual right of the heart appears on the left of the drawing. This is similar to the case like in a mirror. The red portion is representative of the flow of the oxygenated blood and the left which is the deoxygenated blood flow is represented by the blue. The heart has four chambers. We have the upper chambers. The upper chambers are called the atria and the lower chambers over here is called the ventricles. Oxygenated blood enters the heart through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium. So once it's entered into the left atrium, what happens is that the atrium will contract once it's filled. Once it contracts, the blood passes through the bicuspid valve over here. The bicuspid valve is also known as the mitral valve. So the blood passes through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. Once the left ventricle is filled and the left ventricle would contract, once it contracts, the blood will pass through this portion over here. This is known as the semilunar valve or the aortic valve if it's on the left side of the heart. And it will pass through this aortic valve into the aorta. The blood from the aorta will pass to the rest of the body. Since it's oxygenated, the rest of the body will take in the oxygen, resulting in deoxygenated, de sorry, deoxygenated blood being passed back to the heart on the right side. And on the right side of the heart is where the deoxygenated blood comes back in. So here we have the inferior vena cava. The vena cava is the largest vein in the body. And we have the superior vena cava over here. So the superior and the inferior vena cava. Superior in vena cava brings in blood from the upper portion of the body. And the inferior vena cava brings in blood from the lower portion of the body back into the heart. So blood enters the right atrium through the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. After which it passes this portion over here. This is the tricuspid valve. Blood passes, deoxygenated blood passes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Once the right ventricle is filled with blood, it will contract, causing the blood to pass through this point over here. This once again is called the semilunar valve, or in other words, it's called the pulmonary valve. Once the ventricle contracts, it causes the blood to pass through the semilunar valve into the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery would eventually lead to the lungs to get the deoxygenated blood oxygenated once again. After which, it would find its way back through the pulmonary vein over here into the left atrium of the heart. And so the cycle continues over and over and over again. As a recap, let's see how as a recap, on the left portion of the heart, 
which is the oxygenated portion of blood. It will enter the heart through the pulmonary vein. The blood from the pulmonary vein comes from the lungs. Once it enters the pulmonary vein and into the left atrium, what happens is that it will pass through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle, passing through the semilunar valves into the aorta. Let's relate that back to the drawing once again. So on the left portion of the heart, the blood enters the pulmonary vein over here into the left atrium, passing through the bicuspid valve over here into the left ventricle. Then it passes the semilunar valve and enters the aorta. On the right side of the heart, we have the vena cava, the superior and inferior vena cava, which brings in the oxygenated blood from the whole body. It enters the right atrium. Once the right atrium is filled and contracts, it passes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Once the right ventricle is filled and contracts, it would once again pass through the semilunar valve into the pulmonary artery. Relating back to the drawing once again, vena cava brings in deoxygenated blood into the right atrium, passes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, passes the semilunar valves and enters the pulmonary artery. From the pulmonary artery, it would head towards the lungs to get oxygenated once again. This is the actual illustrated structure of the heart. The portion in blue is the deoxygenated and the portion in red is the oxygenated. The upper chambers are located over here, the atrium, right atrium, and the left atrium. The lower chambers, which are the ventricles, is located here, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Recapping once again, the pulmonary vein brings in oxygenated blood into the left atrium, which means that this is the pulmonary vein bringing in oxygenated blood into the left atrium. The blood then enters the left ventricle, passing through the valve. So on the left, it is the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve. So this is the valve. Once the blood enters the left ventricle, it is pumped into the aorta, passing the semilunar valve. So this would be the semilunar valve into the aorta and this would be the aorta. And now for the deoxygenated blood, it enters the heart through the vena cavas, the superior vena cava over here, the largest vein in the body, and the inferior vena cava over here. This brings the deoxygenated blood into the right atrium and enters the right ventricle past the valve over here. This valve is the tricuspid valve. From the ventricle, it enters the pulmonary artery passing the semilunar valve over here. This is another illustrated drawing and the same applies over here. Oxygenated blood enters the left atrium through the pulmonary veins from the lungs, passes the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve, enters the left ventricle, and from the left ventricle, it passes the semilunar valve the semilunar valve leading to the aorta, also known as the aortic valve. So this is the aortic valve. Blood flows from the left ventricle past the aortic valve into the aorta towards the rest of the body. Once the oxygen is used in the rest of the body, it returns back to the heart as deoxygenated blood, entering the heart through the superior vena cava, 
and through the inferior vena cava. So inferior and superior vena cava enters the right atrium. Sorry, enters the right atrium. From the right atrium, it passes the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Once the right ventricle contracts, the blood passes through this semilunar valve. This semilunar valve is also known as the pulmonary valve. So it passes through the pulmonary or semilunar valve into the pulmonary artery which should head towards the lungs to get oxygenated once again. I hope this video has helped you in your understanding of the various chambers in the heart, the atrium and the ventricle, as well as the blood flow through the heart. If you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more upcoming videos.